Okay, we're given this f of x, and now we have three different parts that we have to do to, to uh, finish this one. First part is we want to use the list, the rational zero theorem to find a list of rational real zeros. The second one, we're going to actually, once we have that list, we're going to actually find what the zeros actually are. And then for part C, we're going to use the zeros to factor f of x. So the first thing we have to do the rational zero theorem. So a rational zero theorem says that we're going to take the factors of the last number divided by the factors of the first number. The factors of the last number, factors of 20, would be all numbers that divide evenly into 20. So here's all the factors of 20. We have 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Those are all the factors of 20. On the bottom, I'm going to do factors of the first number, which is 1. So always factors of the top number, factors of the, of the last number divided by factors of the first number. We get this list here, but you don't want to leave your answer in that form. You want to take all the numbers on top and divide by the number you have on the bottom. So if I do that, all I get is just the same list I had originally on top. So plus or minus 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. That's, that's all. All those are the numbers from my list. So that completes it. So I know that the, where the graph actually crosses the x-axis, if it's a rational number, it would actually be found on this list. So what I have to do now is I have to figure out what the actual number is. And the way we do that is by using synthetic division. So uh, the way that the text shows is they show uh, trying every single one of these until you find one that gives a zero. And then we can use that to bring it down to a quadratic. We have to find at least one number that gives us a remainder of zero because this is a cube and I can't factor it in this form. However, if I bring it down to an x squared, then I have some more options. I can either factor it or I can use quadratic formula. So the idea here is you want to find at least one number that takes it down into uh, a quadratic when I do synthetic division. Now, how do you find that number? Okay, a couple different ways. First of all, if you have a graphing calculator, you can graph this and you can see where one number where it crosses the x-axis. You probably want to look for one where it crosses at a whole number. You don't want to do one where it's kind of in between two lines because then it might be a fraction and you may not be able to know accurately what that fraction actually is. So you probably want to go for one where it crosses at a whole number or integer. Uh, and so you would do that. The other way, and what the book uh, shows is again, you're testing each of these, putting all of them in one by one with synthetic division until you find one that gets a remainder of zero. So um, you, again, you have a couple different options there. So suppose that you wanted to just do trial and error and just start from the very beginning of the list. Let's just start with one and see what happens. If we get a zero, that means that that's actually going to be part of my answer. That's going to be one of the zeros that's going to be on here and also will take it down into a quadratic that I can factor. I'll start with one. I have my coefficients uh, that I have from this. I don't have to modify this at all. It's already descending powers and no term is missing, so this is okay to leave as is. And then I will go through the synthetic division. So the one right here, that's in my, my original box. That's the one I'm testing first. Drop down the one. One times one is one. Add those together, you get nine. Multiply. One times nine is nine. Add it together, we get 20. 20 times one gives you 20 here. When you add that together, you get a zero for your remainder. Okay, so that, that tells me because I get a remainder of zero, the remainder theorem says that that definitely will be an x-intercept. It's one of my zeros. Okay, so now that I find, found that one, notice what it's, what's left is it, it took it down into a quadratic. So now I can rewrite that as x squared plus 9x plus 20. Remember that when you uh, do some synthetic division, it originally it was a cube takes it down by one, so this is going to be a square, and then what you do is everything else is going to be descending powers from this leading one. So two, and then this will be a one power of zero. Whatever is left, once you do some division the first time, your answer with the quadratic, we're going to take that one and we're going to factor that one now and we'll be able to get our answers. So factoring this one, we get x and x, numbers that multiply to make 20, add to be nine, would be four and five. We're going to set that equal to zero, and we're going to get negative four and negative five. When I write my answer, however, don't forget about the one that we found originally. So the one that we found either by trial and error or by using a calculator, that's going to be another one of my answers. So for part B, you would put this in, negative four, negative five, and one. Those are 
those are all the zeros. Now the last step, we want to factor f of x. So when you factor that one, we're actually going to use this part right here. This part was already, we already factored this already. We know that that's definitely going to be part of my answer. So I have x plus 4 and x plus 5. However, this is not what, this doesn't multiply to make x cubed on there. We need to have one more piece. So remember what we talked about before, when you want to create a factor from an x-intercept, you always want to do x minus whatever that zero happens to be. So the other answer I got was a one. So now we're going to put x minus one in there. And so this, now we have three terms. If you multiply that together, you will get the x cubed and that would be correctly factored. So your answers would be three of them, negative four, negative five, and one. They actually come from this. So this would be the fully factored form of the original one. And if setting that equal to zero, you would get these. So this process allows you now to factor uh, a, something with a cube in it, whereas before in previous classes, you might not have known how to do that. The, the method they show you usually is by grouping method, but the grouping method wouldn't work on this one. So this process actually allows you now to be able to factor things that are a little bit more complicated.